And Carol, I'm going to give you the floor, and that is to interview our guest. You're going to use him as a guest now, but our panel member, Ross Lyon, because we need to tie a bit of a bow in his uh, coaching career at Fremantle and moving across to the, his next stage of life. So uh, we're Just fascinated. Just let me flick a switch back to <laughs> the coach's head on. No, no, well, it all, it, look, it all began so brilliantly, didn't it? And, of course, you took Fremantle to a grand final and some great victories, including that unbelievable win over Geelong um, when they made you go and play down at Skilled Stadium. But the, the, the sacking, even though it looked like you might be coming to the end at Fremantle, to, you witnessed very few days like a day when a CEO and a coach are sacked at the same time at a footy club. Obviously... Steve Rossich, your former CEO, was supporting you till the end. The board got you both. Did, did you lose the players as well? No, not at all. I mean, the night I got sacked, I had 17 players come around to my place, and in particular in the afternoon. So, um, and it was such a young group that my, my model really is support and challenge. So early days, challenge, challenge at St Kilda, but it, it was a group bringing through Brayshaw. I mean, that broken jaw, I've never been closer to a player, really. So Was, that, was, it, was it your worst yeah. day in footy? No, I've never been sacked before. It was actually an interesting experience for me. Um, retired through injury, went to Brisbane. Every assistant coaching move moved. F incredibly lucky to be at the Swans, St Kilda. So it's the first time I've been sacked, so it's been... An interesting experience. So, well, welcome to television, <laughs> pal. You're so, used to that. But I'm sure there'll be a couple more of them. Um, interest for Fremantle. The early, the first four or five years were incredible for me. But it, it was a rocky start. Let's not forget that. I went over in controversial circumstances. And, and in the end... Um, what went wrong? Well, in the end, we didn't... We, we were going really well last year. We were 6-3. Second defence, 6 attack, 7-5. And then a lot of injuries. But... There was a lot of noise that the club, they made a big, bold decision and they're entitled to set a new new direction and get new people in and that's what football clubs do. I've always said it's a win-loss business. Did you fall out with your footy manager? No, not at all. I've got enormous respect for Peter. He was come in to, to, make, to look Peter, and Peter make Bell. judgments. Yeah, Peter, Peter Bell. Bell. Um, but in the end, everyone's going to be judged. I was judged and that's the thing. Don't hide. Put yourself up there. It's a performance in industry and in the end... Justin Longmuir, Peter Bell, um, Dale Alcock, everyone's going to be judged in the fullness of time. And so are you warming this seat for a year or do you want to coach again? It's not something, because it was such a big decision, shifting my family back, getting in the schools, um, recalibrating myself, try, trying to get myself healthy after a full knee replacement I'm making ground on. I, I went and did a course at Columbia straight away. I, I, I want to improve um, everything about myself where, where I can contribute and really develop professionally in a lot of ways. So it's not something I'm driving towards, but clearly I'm going to be associated as the year unfolds, I would think. But um, it would have to be... I'd never say never, that, that old one, but you'd have to be aligned with CEO, president, players, support, coaches. Uh, there'd be, have to be an enormous amount for, for me to go back into Ross, it to go right. I think some people think the worst decision you made at Fremantle was what you decide to wear to your farewell press conference. So you, <laughs> you couldn't find the polo top, the Freo <laughs> polo top, so some are questioning this green knit that you decide to wear. Oh, Matthew, yeah, well, is that a, the best no, you No, it's not a knit, it's a nudie top. <laughs> um, and I thought it really uh, blended in with the season. The bald spot's probably not <laughs> flattering and I've probably got a few more kilos on. But look, the only reason I did that, because I come home to see my kids... Mm -hmm. And then they rang and said, don't come here, there's a media pack. Yeah. So I went to a friend's house and my little boy was skateboarding over, said, Dad, they're still here. Rang for advice, um, spoke to key media advisors. The only way you're going to get the media pack off is, is do a presser, um, and, but don't do it at your house. And that's why I did it at the park. And at the end of the day, your, your story, get it off the shelf, get it done, and we can all move on. You haven't been exactly yeah. bullish, sorry, about Fremantle this year. In fact, I've listened to you in recent weeks on radio and various other forums and um, websites. You haven't been... You don't seem to think they're going to have a big year. Well, I think... I'm not sure. I haven't done much. I've done a, um, an Age article and, and a podcast. No, I, I, I was asked on the podcast, I think the expectations is finals. We were 6-3, 7-5, and regardless of injury, the internal expectation was to play finals. And I would think with a year of development, a new coach, new system, that that should be achievable. And I think Nathan Fife has verbalised that himself. Have they got some challenges with Hill and Langdon gone? Yeah, but the recruitment of Akers and the development of Bewley and Aish, I, I think it can be done. Last question for me. How good's Fife? He's an incredibly special player. Uh, you, can't, 
you can't have a favourite son, you know. So I've had Rewald Pavlich, and he's right up there with the greats of the game. Um, and his leadership has come on leaps and bounds, and he, he's trying to take that club to their first premiership, and if anyone can do it, he can.